So very quick agenda of what we're going to go through. Uh, we're going to first run through some introductions. So um, really, really excited to be joined by uh, the three people we see here, Brandon, Sean and Itai. They're going to go through a quick introduction on themselves, um, the companies they work for and their focus. Um, next, we're going to jump into what is agency first? What's agency first software? Um, then we're going to talk about tips on how agencies can choose the right software, um, the right agency first software to help them grow. Um, and then we're going to have a, a Q&A section at the end. So one thing I'd advise, um, if anyone's got any questions as we go along, drop them down in the chat box. Um, that way, when we get to the Q&A section, what I'll do first is I'll go through the questions that have been posted in the chat box, the Zoom chat box. If, do if anyone doesn't know how to do that, if you just hover towards the bottom, um, there should be a bar at the bottom and there's a, a little widget that says chat. You can open that up at any point, drop your question in there, and then we get to the q and I'll run through those questions first um, before then, if we've got any more time, then people can just ask questions as we get um, at that point as well. So let's jump straight into it. Let's go into introductions. So um, Sean, would you like to go first? A quick introduction to yourself um, and high level. Sure. I'm Sean. I'm the co-founder, one of the co-founders of High Level, and we are agency-only software. Nice, nice. So not agency first, high level, specifically agency only. Correct. Cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, great to have you here, Sean. Um, Itai, would you like to go next and introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Itai Sedan, uh, CEO and co-founder of Duda. Uh, we are a website builder for digital marketing agencies and uh, SaaS platforms. Uh, I founded the company 13 years ago. We have now about 22,000 agencies uh, using the platform worldwide to build websites and over a million websites uh, built to date. Nice. Nice. Yeah, a lot of our, a lot of our customers uh, are also due to customers and, and high level as well. Uh, so thanks both for joining. And then uh, Brandon, over to yourself. All right. I'm Brandon Lilly, uh, Senior Brand Director and Digital Marketing Strategy. Marketing Recording Strategy. in progress. Been here for been here. Uh, just going on 11 years, been in the industry for about 15. Uh, Marketing 360 is a uh, all-encompassing everything small business and agency needs to uh, be tech and marketing enabled. Nice, nice. And I think probably one of the, the different, the Looking at this, it's probably heard, Brandon heard with that. Marketing 360. Um, you guys actually do services as well as just software, right? But software is a core part of your business. We do. Uh, yeah, we uh, we we have what you know, like the the do it yourself kind of side of things, and then we have the do it for me. So yeah, we offer the service as well as the software. So you can either run the software yourself, or we handle all of it. Nice. Okay. Awesome. So, um, and then finally, there's myself. So. Uh, let me move this out of the way. I hope you guys can see. Yeah, so my name's Andy. I'm the CEO of Hike, uh, CEO and co-founder. Uh, founded the business along with the business partner, Kieran, five years ago. Uh, and we're a software to help um, small businesses and small agencies um, do their own SEO. So we, the majority of our, our revenue actually comes from, from agencies um, that kind of evolved over time. Um, and yeah, agencies are a big focus um, and a big customer base for us and one where we see a lot of growth moving forwards. So yeah, that's everyone. Um, so I think now let's jump into the first topic of conversation. So I've kind of got a slide here. What's agency first? Because I think um, us guys, us four, we know what agency first means in terms of, okay, it's a direction for the business. Um, but a lot of our users, our users won't know that. Um, and I think it, it's I, you know, when we had a conversation before, you you kind of raised this yourself. So would you like to run through um, what agency first software is to you? And I guess how you got to that point with Duda? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think this is a great topic. You know, I don't, I don't remember recall uh, this specific, you know, discussing this in a previous webinar. So it's definitely... Uh, uh, a good topic uh, and a fresh talk topic to discuss, and uh, one that's uh, very unique to this uh, session, and and one that I feel you know pretty passionate about because uh, we definitely are uh, what what is uh, called here an agency first type of platform, and we weren't always 
uh, that way. So when I started Duda 13 years ago, um, you know, we we were seeing a lot of growth. And if you would ask me who the customer is back then, I'd t- I'd tell you, you know, anybody who wants to use us on the internet. You know, there was no there was no differentiation. There was no ICPs. You know, we 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 di- these words did not come into our lexicon, and uh, it's just anybody who wants to use the software. But as as kind of uh, a couple of years in, uh, and we were seeing a lot of growth in in those early days. I guess there was not a lot of competition, and uh, for different reasons. But then as the kind of the competition increased, uh, that question of, you know, who's who's our customer uh, kept crawling in and uh, and we had a tough time answering it because we had SMBs using the software, we had agencies using the software, we just had different users. And, uh, you know, we we felt that it was kind of tearing the company to, it's like, it, it was hard for R&D to prioritize which features SMBs were pushing for simplicity while the requests coming from agencies were give me flexibility, mm. uh, give me more powerful tools. On the marketing front, it was difficult because, you know, like, how do you message things? I remember a lot of discussions. Do we say responsive websites or do we say build a website that works on desktop, tablet, and mobile, right? Like really simplify mm-hmm. for, for an SMB. So at all levels, all the way to sales, it was really complicating stuff. And then we made this really strategic decision. And this was maybe four or five years into the company that we're going to be an agency first uh, yeah, company. Yeah, this is and so, and what, what, that, what that meant is that from that day onward, we were not spending a dollar uh, to acquire an SMB. Uh, this mm-hmm. is eight years ago. And, uh, and, and that decision of, of focus really transcended across the company and, and really helped uh, all organizations focus. You know, if you look at our messaging and I'm sure a lot like some of our other uh, presenters here, if you go to our website, you will see that everything is communicated uh, at the agency level, speaking to agencies, the features that have been prioritized over the years are features that uh, that were built for agencies, and we can talk a lot more about what that means. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, it's so it's so interesting because we we were so similar, or we are so similar um, here at Hike because, uh, in a way, that the product the products the same, right? It's for us. It's like a, an, an SMB can use Hike, or an agency can use Hike. Uh, and they both use the features same, you know, keyword research, uh, optimizing websites. But then it, it 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 definitely became apparent over time that agencies just have a slight, although the base product, the fundamental same, the need is different and the specifics around it is different. Um, and, and and that's that makes so much sense why you guys then decided to do that. And then I'm assuming that then gave. I'm assuming that gave a good purpose. And did you see the benefits from doing that, especially if you're agency customers? Did they notice the benefits of of being an agency first software? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll start with, uh, you know, I think the, you know, why we chose agencies over SMBs. Uh, I think we looked back then at our data. We saw the growth from agencies. You know, as I mentioned, it was roughly 50-50 in terms of kind of the revenue split back then. Mm -hmm. But we saw the growth from agencies. Uh, it, it was faster. Mm. Uh, I think the DNA of the company, our engineering is in Israel. I felt like we felt like, you know, we know how to build sophisticated stuff well. We know how to build powerful tools. I, we didn't, I don't think our DNA inside the company was really, uh, um, you know, one that let's let's build the most simplest thing that anybody, um, you know, that the owner of the pizzeria and the dentist can use themselves. And then we looked at the market and we felt that it was a huge market uh, to focus on web professionals. And uh, we didn't feel that the existing tools in the market were uh, were were sufficient and understood the pain points of the of these agencies well enough. Uh, we felt that they were mo- mostly SMB first type of tools that agencies could also use uh and and that that's why we decided uh to focus uh on on the agencies and i think over time as we grew and we added more and more agency specific features so things that 
you know, everything around white label and tools that help agencies uh, ma manage or communicate with their clients and tools mm -hmm. and features that help an agency collaborate internally with the in, inside the staff. You know, it's all the things that we were really focused on while kind of other competitors that were kind of more SMB first didn't even think about in, in those mm. days. That's interesting. And so, um, Sean, I'd li like to hand it over to you now, because obviously you're, you're slightly different here in, in the sense that, as you mentioned, you're agency only, right? So oh, there might man. be some agency, there might be some agency owners, you know, watching this um, who don't use any software, right? So they might even go, what's agency first, let alone agency only. So, so what, 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 what are the benefits for an agency for using a software in your eyes? Why do you think it's so key for an agency to grow? Well, yeah, so we're, it's funny, I was just trying to look this up, but we're kind of the new kid on the block. So compared to Marketing 360 and Duda, we're radically younger. I think they've both been around nine years longer than we have. Um, but today we serve about 70,000 agencies who serve about uh, 700,000 small businesses now and 3 million users. Mm -hmm. And what we were lucky enough to discover earlier on is that agencies really make the difference between success and failure for a small business. So, you know, even when we, when we first started, we for a very brief moment sold directly to SMBs and we had a very simple feature set and it was, and it was crazy for me because as an engineer, I think, you know, features equal success, but when we put it in the hands of a customer, you know, we would see that they would very immediately fail out and churn. And when we to ask them why, they would sort of say, well, you know, uh, we know this is important. We know we need to do this, but we just don't have time. And I hear this over and over and over again. And I was very, very stumped. But lucky for me, we had an agency owner call us and kind of let us in on the big secret, which is really, truly, if you want to be successful as a small business, let's take the dentist. You know, if you want to be the best dentist in town, what you need to focus on is being the best dentist in town. But you need to hire someone who can help you on the marketing front do amazing things. And that's what an agency is all about. And as we've evolved, software tends to become the, the way in which this is all done. And so if you don't have software as a business, you're going to be in trouble. And But the right person to bring you that software is not a salesperson, is not a website, is not a, you know, a cold call from some SaaS company. It's an agency. It's somebody who can take a tool and create an outcome. I think of software like I think of hammers and saws and nails. You know, when I want my house remodeled, I don't go buy hammer saws and nails because I'm just going to whack myself in the thumb with my hammer and I'll be done here. <laughs> so instead, I really just want the house remodeled. And, you know, if we all think about it, it makes a lot of logical sense. The next time you sit down at your dentist, and they're about to drill your teeth. If they say, hey, I've been building a great website recently and I've been learning about funnels and I've been learning about marketing copy. OK, let's get drilling. You're not going to be super thrilled with that message. And you're going to want to run out of your dentist screaming. So you really, really, really need to see that the world of software now, in my opinion, is agency only, not because it's a good business gimmick, but because it makes a lot of sense. If you truly want to get people who can master these tools, which are sophisticated now, which are more feature rich now, you, you need a professional to do that. And that's what an agency is. Mm, okay. That's interesting. And then, um, uh, uh, Brandon, I, I guess you guys, Marketing360, have been around for so long and you have such a variety of like products what does this what does the software product mean to marketing 360 because obviously you offer the services and the software how do you see the distinction for an agency or do you do you well, allow them to go just software only yeah it, it was kind of interesting so for us you know we primarily started on that service side we were we were the agency doing everything that everybody here is talking about right yeah um so we were servicing the customer and doing all that and we realized we needed a software to help us so we needed something to help us service the client better and offer a better product and offer a better result and things like that. So we started building Marketing 360 for ourselves. Mm. As an agency, we didn't really have a service provider who could provide what we needed and uh, in the way that we needed it. I mean, yeah, at, at that point, you're running off of 100 different spreadsheets, right? And you yeah. have all these different things, to, these different tools. So we didn't have or, or there wasn't really available to us the tools that we needed. So we started building it for ourselves. Got so you. for a very long time, all of the, the Marketing 360 services were just kind of internal, mm -hmm. right? internal to us. Um, and then, you know, we 
as we're building this, you know, we give the customer access to do different things. And well, the first version was basically very pretty reporting. And then the second version, uh, you can also uh, you know, do X, Y, or Z in it. And then the third version and all this, you know, we were doing everything in the back end, but we were slowly releasing this to the customer to see. And we get the exact same response. You know, if we had to split our client base, we would say that, you know, 90, 95% of them, we do the, we service. 5% of them, they do it themselves. And that's the dentist that just can't keep his hands out of his website, you know? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So for us, it's actually been recent where we finally went, you know what? We've already built this software. It works great for us as an agency with 20,000 small business oh, oh. clients. Why don't we start working with agencies, kind of, you know, getting rid of this walled garden, take something that we've proven over the past, you know, 14 years. It works very, very well and offer them, you know, offer agencies the ability to do what we do. Or next step is we can offer agencies the ability to resell the services that we are already offering in addition to our software. So we didn't actually start agency first, although I guess you could say that we were building the software for us as an agency first. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you know, that wasn't really our goal in the beginning. We just realized, wow, we've done something really cool here. It works very, very well. Let's offer this to uh, to small businesses and to agencies at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's interesting to hear that obviously you got, you started as the, the agency model and developed the software yep. and, um, uh, you know, myself personally. Um, so I've been in SEO for 12 years and I was in agencies consulting freelance for, for like eight of those, right. For seven, eight. And, and it does give you a good, you understand what the agency lives back. And, and I think I'd like to think that that then helps us to develop the project because the co-founder co -founder did as well. And, you know, a lot of the staff we have have been from the agency. So I'm interested to hear, um, Itai, how do, you, how do you feel about that? Do you think there's a that there's a need for within the, the software that we're creating to have that experience of, of of agency work in the past or having that close relationship, I guess, with agencies? What, what's the benefit there? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's uh, the, these examples um, of, uh, like Brandon mentioned, when you, when you feel the pain yourself and you build mm -hmm. a solution to solve your own pains... But, this is always a great start, and uh, a lot of a lot of software companies uh, founders came came from that place. Mm. Um, you know, specifically for me, I, you know, I I didn't have an agency before that, and um, I I came from maybe a bigger company. Uh, I started SAP, and I I felt a different pain back then. Uh, I felt how like software was was being built for larger companies and not really being focused on uh you know the small businesses which are you know 99% of uh of of businesses worldwide i felt you know personally the pain of uh, you know or maybe lack of enjoyment sometimes of dealing with these bigger companies uh and their slow decision making it was exciting working with uh you know with smaller businesses that mm -hmm. uh this, you know, the owner knew the business inside out, you know, if they decided to buy the software, you know, it came from their own pocket. And I feel, you know, many of the agencies that uh, we deal with today are small businesses themselves as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I think as, as we got into the space and um, we got to see that some, you know, some of our, I think over time, uh, we learned the agency business just by having a lot of agency, agency customers see value in our product. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know we we listened very carefully to their request uh and and kind of added those things into into the product over time hired people into the company that had this agency background so i definitely think that if you're a founder and you know you're not coming from the space it's good to complement the team with people that uh do come with that experience and th these are some of the things we did yeah yeah absolutely i mean agency owners are great for feedback that's for sure, right? And they're not, they're not afraid well, no, to share no, their no, opinion, no, right? Not quiet, right? <laughs> they're not quiet. No, no. Agency owners typically doesn't attract quiet people, but that's great, right? So you've always, you've always got plenty to put on the roadmap. You just need a big yeah, enough yeah. development team, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, they, they will definitely let you know when they're not happy. Yeah. And, you know, we we have a we have a very busy you know social media. Uh, we have a Facebook group with a couple of thousands of customers, and mm -hmm. they're, they're definitely very vocal about you know our prioritization in our roadmap and yeah, what right. they need <laughs> and so forth so uh, it's uh it's it's great great conversation and uh we definitely uh you know we definitely learn a lot from it and we we you know it's it's part of our decision making when we are uh, prioritizing our roadmap 
mm-hmm. a master class in understanding that you can't please everybody all the time. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. your, your, your roadmap goes one direction and then you've got a very vocal few that are like, wait a minute, hold on. And yeah. you still have to balance that, right? Because you've got to be able to balance a software that, that works for everybody or for mm-hmm. as many people as possible while still you know solving those intricate and unique problems that agency owners face. Mm. It, it could be something that's industry specific. You know, they work in a, they, they only work with car manufacturers or something, you know, it could be anything. Uh, could they only work with plumbers? So it's very unique to them, but it is still, you know, everywhere uh, other people serve plumbers also. So yeah. it's definitely a, a, a challenge to be able to create something that will work for as many agencies as possible while still solving those unique problems that they might face individually. Yeah. A hundred percent agree with uh, Brandon here. And, you know, uh, again, not all agencies are created equal. There's, as Brandon mentioned, there's different agencies. Some are vertical focused. Some are focused on, um, you know, really small, you know, businesses, home offices, and are building at scale. Some are serving uh, bigger companies and need other types of features. So I think even over time, as I mentioned in our story, we in the beginning, it was kind of a decision. We're going to focus on agencies, not SMBs. But I think over time, that question of, who is our customer? We never stopped asking that question. It's it's always a double click, even into agencies. Is okay. So from within agencies, who are who is the ideal customer profile? That ICP, is it you know, for us, is it s- small web designers, writers, uh, mm-hmm. uh, or is it bigger agencies? You know, and and I think we've kind of also uh, over time moved to you know we, we're servicing all of them but we've definitely developed a lot of features that i think help also those agencies that want to scale and are building you know not you know two three or five sites a year but are building tens hundreds and some of our customers are building thousands of sites a year and there's definitely a lot of features there that uh assist them in in scaling that that business you definitely need other features uh very powerful features to manage those amounts of clients at scale. Yeah. Um, this is where personally, um, I would say agencies have been our cheat code to success because, you know, because we only work with agency owners, what we found is every time we went to go out and put out, out a feature, we didn't have to ask the dentist or the doctor or the plumber what they wanted. We would just ask the agencies. And so even to this day, we have a ideas list. Our customers post their ideas, they vote them up. And we actually literally use this ideas list to determine what we're going to do next. And it's been fun, fun, fanatically successful. I mean, we have this massive Facebook group, but it's all full of agency owners. And so what we found over time was that if you had enough votes, um, you got enough I- people to support a particular idea, when you would come out with that version, you would come out with the version that actually made the difference between success or failure. So we were able to actually not build a lot of features that I think some people would have asked for if they were an SMB, but they just don't know what, what they actually need to be successful. And if you're an agency owner doing this hundreds of times a year for all kinds of different clients over many years, you you understand like this feature is important for this very specific reason to actually achieve the important outcome of, let's say, getting more customers, which is really what matters versus this other thing that sounds like it's cool or sounds like it's good, but honestly doesn't really move the needle that much. And so we've been super lucky. We always call it the the, the 2080 rule. It's like 20% of the features kind of drive about 80% of the outcomes. And so because we're agency only, we sort of get to skip around all of the bad advice that I think you would traditionally get from an SMB who as well intentioned, don't get me wrong, but probably needs to stay in their lane. Whereas it's the agencies who really have a lot of honest to goodness experience to trying out different features in the world and knowing which ones really hit and which ones are irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I think what I'd, it kind of segues nice onto the, onto this, this next slide, but before I go into that, actually, yeah, be really interesting. So, so when we're looking at here at Hike, we're looking at new features to roll out. Um, there is there is always the we we get requests from agencies, and I find um, a lot of the time the requests from agency the features will actually be. Sometimes it will be, can you do the same feature as what X software over there can do? Right, I want that. You guys don't have that, but then you've got your own ideas, your own internal ideas of what products will help them. The they they don't even know about right yet you know because it's not a feature that's maybe on another software 
So it'll be interesting to know. So Brandon, how do you guys prioritize what what features to build for agencies and how do you how do you get their feedback and how do you balance that in terms of right what what they want and actually sometimes what we we know they they want but they don't know yet right <laughs> uh internally we refer to it as eating our own dog food because again we're kind of our own biggest customer when it comes to our software because we're using it for for thousands of clients as an agency uh but when we get those agency requests we kind of balance it with it, uh, is it stackable? Is it scalable? Is it teachable? Is it trainable? And does it interact and work with the other features of the software? If we start talking about, you know, dog legging off the software and creating something that it, you know, oh, well, we could do this. We have brilliant genius designers and developers on, on our team. They could make the software do anything. And sometimes you have to, you've got to set those parameters and go, you know what, that's probably not a world that we want to live in. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to build a social listening tool. There are millions of great social social listening tools out there. There are, you know, there's all these other things that's, that's maybe, that's not blue ocean, right? That's red ocean. We don't want to be in that because there's already plenty of other softwares that do that. So part of our evaluation is going, is it stackable? Is it scalable? within our software, or is it something that makes more sense from a cost perspective, both internally for us and externally for our agency clients to utilize a different software that plays nicely? Mm -hmm. you know, if it's something that will integrate or play nicely with our software and it just makes more sense. Now, I think there's probably plenty of overlap between all of us, all of our softwares here that, that you know the panel offers. There's mm -hmm. a good amount of overlap in the services and the, you know, the features that our, 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 platforms, uh, our platforms offer. Mm -hmm. And the goal here is to play nice with those other platforms where you can, because, you know, high level may have a far better feature that does X than, than mm -hmm. Duda does, or maybe there's no overlap there, but because they play nicely together, Marketing 360 fits in and covers these areas. So we always look for opportunities and ways to ensure that the software can and does run 100% and does, uh, you know, if, as a walled garden. But we don't dog leg out and, uh, you know, we don't uh, you know, right, kind of exclude the other features that mm -hmm. maybe somebody else is just better at doing. So we yeah. want to make sure that we work well with them, too. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah I think, uh, you know, we all, you know, we we definitely um, battle with that question of, you know, how, mm -hmm. how do you balance, you know, customer feedback? And we have multiple channels for customer feedback. So we have, a, a, you know, a long list there, including an idea board. Um, but then we have, you know, our our vision of where where we want to take the product, and um, mm -hmm. you know, there's uh, that famous uh, Henry Ford quote of uh, about cu taking customer input, right? That if you would just do what customers asked, he would build a faster horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but so there's all there's always a, a balance there, and I think it's a delicate balance, and one 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 that has to, you know, you, you definitely want to invest kind of both in the, your own vision and, you know, and, and also take into consideration customer feedback and kind of invest in both areas. Um, you know, I think in, for us, like when we think about, you know, these, these things that customers are not expecting, you know, they're not asking kind of, cause they would ask for probably, you know, the, the, you know, that faster horse, the things that they need yeah. right now. And we're kind of trying to push, push the boundaries and we are trying to mm -hmm. think of, you know, how do we uh, stay competitive in the market and how, how do we, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, surprise our customers and and build the things that they're not expecting, but that will really help them uh, become better, right? We have this kind of uh, our vision uh, statement, which is to empower web professionals to build uh, um, uh, to build uh, amazing uh, websites. And it's it if if we're building a feature, it needs to it needs to uh, align to that vision in 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 one of two ways. Either it is a feature that is empowering web professionals, so it's helping them be more productive, helping them be better, or it's uh, helping build cutting edge next generation websites, mm -hmm. and uh, you know helping the websites be you know. Uh, better performing, be smarter websites, including AI, including all kinds mm -hmm. of different uh, things. So yeah. uh, so as long as we feel that it's contributing to the overall vision of the company, then we feel like we're, uh, we're, we're it's, it's worthwhile and we're in the right direction. Nice. Okay. I think that's very, very interesting because I think we take an incredibly opposite track line. Um, we have 
no, no prescribed vision, no prescribed opinions. We sort of see ourselves in the service of our customer and we feel like they're always going to drive us towards the next real innovation. I mean, we can all think about like a good example, in my opinion, is is AI, right? Like everyone knows AI is a thing and we're all running around trying to figure out where, where it's going to hit and what it's going to do to change the world. But what we find is our customers are way out in front of us already trying 500 other apps that they've seen and really trying to figure out how they're going to take these tools and apply them to their customers. And so we, we really, you know, we, we're always just listening to our customer and doing what they uh, ask us to do. I mean, we're all white label, we're, all, we're agency only. So as a result, we sort of see ourselves in service of our customer. And so for us, it's, hey, what's going to get you that next dollar? What's going to get you that next customer? What's going to help you grow your business? Um, you tell us, we'll build it. We really feel it like that's kind of our model. Um, you know, we we internally, we say, you know, sell them what they want, give them what we, they need. So we certainly like to put in features that we feel like have value, but we always put those in, in a second class position to something that a customer asks us to build. Uh, because again, we see our customers as the experts. And so we're, we're just in a different, a different mode of travel there. Yeah. I think, I think for us guys, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know if, if I don't know. Cause my, I guess my, my typical answer might've been more along with Itai's answer. Right. But then I don't disagree with you, you there, Sean. I, I think I, almost like I'm saying the same thing, but maybe slightly differently. Um, we, we're still, the agencies will come to us with their needs. And then it's up to us, I guess, to decide as well what product or what features fulfill those needs. Sometimes that will be, they need a need to have a specific feature, very, very specific, because it's over on SEMrush for us guys, right? Or something like that, All right? They'll be like the feature they want to have. But then sometimes they'll come to us and they'll be like, look, we just need a better solution for implementing SEO. And then and then that's up to us because there is like, let's say, maybe no equivalent feature. Or maybe there are equivalent features, but they're not quite good enough. And then it kind of comes down to us to go, OK, what would that feature look like? Um, so so do you, does that kind of align with you guys as well? Like when, when customers come to you, I mean, are you building things that maybe aren't always exactly what they're asking for, but you feel is maybe a better solution for what they need? I mean, if you're asking me, I, I mean, we certainly keep our eye out for that, right? But mm -hmm. I think what we always realize is, I mean, we're, we think of ourselves as almost like we, the Costco model. So we're always just, you know, we've got the store, we have customers in the store, and we're just always asking our customers like, well, what else do you buy? Oh, I, you buy mattresses? Great. We're going to stock some mattresses. Oh, you buy air conditioners? Great. Well, we'll stock air conditioners. Like we're really, you know, and do we want to have the best version of that? Uh, absolutely. Um, but mm -hmm. again, I think... Our customer base is so unique in the sense that, I mean, you're talking about some very heavy hitters in marketing. So yeah. every time we're going to deviate in the path, I, I always have to remind my, myself and our product management team, like, listen, you are telling someone who does this on a daily basis, who is super big and has thousands of customers that they're wrong or that you can do better. So maybe that's true, but really respect that that's what you're saying. And deep, if you're going to take that deviation, you should actually probably get on the phone with that person and debate it out before you make that decision. Because in all honesty, they should agree with you. And if they don't, you probably shouldn't go down that path. So we're really, really sensitive to that. Mm. Yeah, really interesting. Um, cool. Brandon, what do you think are some of the, if someone's listening to this, they're going, yeah, do you know what? Like, um, I need to, to grow my agency. I need to start thinking about acquiring agency first software because it does feel like it's an underserved market. Right? I, don't, I don't know if everyone here would agree. Like a lot of the, a lot of the software maybe in what with the areas that we're in is more focused towards the business and not the agency. It's a second thought. So what, what do you think are the, the features, the key features they should be looking for when choosing a software if they're an agency? And it can be as broad as you like, but what are you things they should look for? Well, you, you kind of have to understand what you're trying to accomplish. You know, are you needing a all-in-one software? Are you looking for a software that does something very specific? Are you looking for something that uh, supports a weakness or even a strength in your own agency? You know, are you trying to scale? So you've got all these kinds of questions to ask yourself before you start doing that. But it, once you've decided kind of your roadmap and and what you are what you're shopping for, essentially, what software you need. You know, things that I, I look for in all softwares that I use or anything that we consider integrating with or, you know, uh, if you're if you're like in acquisition mode or something like that, how can it integrate? Will it scale? Will it stack? And then ask the, the other things like, 
how easy is this to handle billing? You know, am, am I going to be on the phone operationally all the time with this software uh, provider working through billing issues or customer service issues or, hey, your software went down and now it's negatively affecting my customers. <laughs> so things like that, you know, but when we're looking specifically at features, I want to find things that are simple and do what they say they're going to do. The additional bells and whistles are all great. They're fun. They're exciting. Uh, but it's at its core, it has to do exactly what I wanted it to do in the first place. And that's why I bought it. You mm -hmm. know, so the feature in my mind, it, it always is keep it simple, stupid, you know, just can I do this and can I turn around and show an employee how to do this in half the time it took me to learn it? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I look for primarily. I think everybody is going to have a different answer here and I, I, I'm excited to hear all that. <laughs> but I want it to I want it to be simple. I want it to do what it says it's going to do and not cause me more problems that are going to trickle downhill and affect my customers. Yeah, I think you touched upon something really interesting there, which is the simpleness um, then makes it easier to train staff, right? And increase profitability yep. in, in what you're doing. I think that that's really, really important because there's- I think that's also a big struggle for a lot of agency owners is, you know, do you do you own the business or do you work in a business that you happen to own? You know, so you've got to be able to train somebody else to do this. And that's, not, you know, that's not uh, speaking against the solo entrepreneur or, you know, anybody like that who's just starting out or is happy being the one man show, one woman show. That's fine. But as an agency, if you want to scale, you've got to be able to do skills transfers. And sometimes that skill transfer is software knowledge or, you know, just operational knowledge of how to accomplish A, B, and C with the tools that, that your agency has internally. So the software or, you know, platform or whatever you're working with, you've got to be able to train that faster than you learned it. Because you're if you want to scale your agency, you're going to have to hire more people. You have to train them to do things the way that you do it, mm -hmm. the way that your agency is known for doing it. So I think that's incredibly important. Yeah, sure. It's high. What, what do you think around the key features? Yeah, um, you know, we 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 spend a lot of time thinking about like the you know the the key features that uh, agencies uh, agencies need, um, and you know we I think there there's always like the way that I I think about it is uh, I kind of think about it as a, you know many times when we are going back to kind of prioritization of of the develop, development roadmap. There's kind of the the rocks and the pebbles, right? There's some always some big uh, features that we're working on, and it takes uh, usually a couple of uh, couple of months to get those out. But in the, in the meantime, there's uh, a lot of these small uh, requests that uh, agencies ask for and are very pertinent to many of them, and we always try to squeeze uh, those as well. I think in the last year or so, we started this. Um, something that uh, we call small improvement sprint, and and that's where, ev you know, the entire R and D team, uh, you know, stops working on on the day to day on kind of their bigger projects that they're uh, that they've been working on, uh, you know, maybe for a couple of months, and we just focus for a week on everybody on on closing a lot of kind of you know small bugs, feature requests. And you know we've we've been getting extremely positive feedback from our customers about it because they mm -hmm. suddenly they see a flow of these small feature requests that they've been requesting for a while getting done and you know being shipped uh, in a in a very short time frame. And I feel like if you don't really get the iron, you know, because people are stuck on these bigger rocks projects, mm -hmm. if you don't kind of stop sometimes and really just get everybody uh, honed down on getting a lot of these smaller things, uh, it just, take, um, you know, either they don't get done or they take a lot of time to get done. And uh, we've, again, we've been getting really great feedback uh, on that. So we're looking to do that more times in the year where, again, we stop everybody's work and we just focus on uh, the stuff that uh, we know that customers are uh, waiting for. Yeah, small improvement sprints. Uh, I love yeah. the idea of that. SIS. Really, really cool. um, Very nice. You know, I think holistically agencies have to start asking themselves also, how is their overall model changing? Mm -hmm. You know, it, agencies, in my opinion, in the future will not just sell services. They will sell software. 
And I think that there's this bit, huge shift in the way the world works. If you think about how it's been in the past, software has been sold by these, you know, these software companies who own all the IP, who have the sales teams and agencies are in effect, either, you know, indirect resellers of their products mm. um, or there are people who are forced to use those products and they get very little benefit from them. I mean, if you've been an agency for five minutes, you'll you'll go out with a client, you'll get a particular software product, you'll put it in place. And then invariably after pouring your heart and soul into it, the client will fire you because they think that the software is doing all the work when in reality you are doing all the work. And the software company doesn't lose the customer, you lose the customer, you lose the revenue. And so in my opinion, that that is a huge problem. Um, and I think that is an absolute inaccuracy and a slight towards every agency. And so the way I see the world evolving is agencies are no longer going to use other people's products. They're going to sell their own. I think this is why white label for us was radically important because I don't see why it is that agencies shouldn't be able to benefit from the revenue streams around software and become in many cases their own de facto software companies because at the end of the day, they're truly providing more than just services. I think they're also providing these tools and they'll continue to do so. So as an agency, I think it's not just what software are you, are you choosing, but it's what model are you choosing? Because service businesses, the reason they don't scale, by the way, and the reason why you don't see a lot of venture capitalists backing them is because it's th they're, they're, they're high uh, revenue, but they're low profit businesses. Software businesses are radically high, high margin businesses. And so as, a, as an agency, you need to think, how do I tack on a high margin software revenue stream to my existing business? Because if you don't, I think you're going to find that that is the prevailing model and the, the winds of change are blowing in that direction. But if you do, it's a much more scalable world. Talk about having to train someone. It's a lot less training to do a piece of software than train them how to do yet another service or use some third party software to affect a service outcome. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so interesting. Um, and, and, and yeah, I absolutely see where you're coming from. And it's, that's going to be a challenge for agencies, you know, and we have it ourselves, right? So people are white, white label um, hike and then they, they sell the software and they are two distinct products right and you know how we set up how you know i run hike and set up hike is very different to the agencies i used to work in you know different needs different customers different so how do you advise a an agency starts to think about implementing a SaaS model in their business and how they set up their agency to satisfy because you've got to think about customer service sales that sort you, of thing you walk before you run i mean you, mm -hmm. you take really simple things like I, I people always ask me like well what what's the one feature to start with and i always love the, the simple things like miss call text back if you put missed call text back in place, which is 100% automated, and you do that for 99% of businesses, that is a $100 million business right there because it's very simple. Have you ever called a business and had them not pick up? Of course you have. What did you do? You called their competitor. Okay, great. Now imagine instead that that business had texted you and said, hey, I'm on the phone. I'm on the other line with a customer. Do you need to book an estimate? You know, Most people will be like, oh, thank God, I can text this business. That's amazing. And then second, yes, I do want an estimate. That's why I called. I wasn't actually calling to chat about the weather um, or, or get your opinion on whatever. I just needed your help to solve a problem. As a, as a one single feature, that's incredibly easy to put in place. You can do it in five minutes and you can scale it really, really well. And again, for most businesses, I can show you how you can get out a $300 a month bill on that one feature right there and scale it beautifully um, and it's an incredibly high profit margin situation. And for most businesses, delivers tremendous amounts of value. So you can start really simply like that with one feature, or you can do reputation management, or you can do um, web chat widgets to help them capture more leads that they're already missing on their website. There's lots of really simple ways to start. And then you just graduate out, out as you move along. But either way, you're establishing yourself as a software platform. You're giving them a recurring soft piece of software value. And as time goes on, you as you charge them more, you'll have more money coming in to create more resources to do things like support. But it doesn't have to be complex and it doesn't have to be you know a big deal. You can start very simply. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, agree here uh, with Sean. And I think uh, you know we also have... Uh, tools that, uh, you know, I think all of us have here tools that, you know, can be white labeled and these and agencies can offer them uh, directly to their SMB customers to do things DIY. Uh, I'm a big believer in, right? Um, it's, you know, S SMBs have a myriad of uh, different uh, types of customers. Some of them are going to be more technical. Some of them are going to be less technical mm -hmm. savvy. Mm -hmm. so I think going out with an approach of, you know, you should support everything, DIFM, DIY, and mm -hmm. do it with me. And uh, mm -hmm. we we have a like a, a simple site builder interface that 
some agencies have chosen to put put it on their website mm. uh, to allow customers. It's kind of a more of a lead generator. Uh, it allows agencies to uh, get some of that some of that traffic that comes to their website to start building a website themselves. And then at a certain point, the agency can take over. So if if that end customer is comfortable going all the way and publishing a site and and going live, that's great. But many times uh, they will want something more advanced, and then that creates kind of a lead for the agency, and the lead, the agency can take over that site and uh, add add that functionality and uh, and and kind of charge for that service as well. So I think mm-hmm. that combination between DIY, DIFM, do it with me is a really interesting paradigm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, Brandon, uh, I guess from a, a marketing three hundred and sixty point of view, and with obviously you guys can provide the services as well. Um, what are your kind of thoughts on on agencies becoming software sellers? I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense, right? You know, you, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think every everyone here the the software is white labelable mm-hmm. uh, or is white labeled kind of by its own uh, definition how it's made. So absolutely, agencies need to be selling not just service but software. Um, yeah, like mm-hmm. Sean said, a lot of it has to do with just that revenue. When you're talking about software, you're talking about you know that high margin, high profitability service. Uh, sure, you might be you know, the the bill is bigger, but so are your costs because mm-hmm. you're supporting it with people, or you're supporting it with other services, you're supporting it with other softwares that you're buying to help manage that, mm-hmm. uh, or or other services. So, yeah, agencies as they move forward, I think we're going to find more and more and more of them are white labeling and effectively reselling software as their own. And that's not a, it's not doing customers a disservice. That's not being dishonest in their business practices. It's saying, Hey, we're marketers. We're an agency. We're not software developers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're not, not, we're not building this software because they don't have to, but they are selling it because it makes sense for their business. Absolutely. Moving forward, we're going to find more and more and more of that. Uh, but I also think we're going to find more agencies that do pivot a little bit and they start doing more of the software development and they they start with the the small, just one little claim to fame that they have and they're going to grow that. And it turns out that may take over the business or they may just start piecemealing together these different pieces of software that they offer as one-offs for one-off uh, additional revenue streams or that they kind of compile together into more of a platform offering that they've slowly kind of built together based on their own needs. Yep. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so we've seen, we've definitely, yeah, we've definitely seen that. Uh, mm. kind of, you know, we try to classify our customers. Is this like a technology company? Is this an agency? And sometimes we look at a company and it's kind of both because mm. many times I think it's uh, just, you know, what Brandon just mentioned, it's a, it started as an agency and they maybe they're vertical specific and they built a certain integration or they built a certain tool and they're servicing other other uh, companies in that vertical and selling that software as well. So uh, we're, we're definitely seeing quite a bit of that as well. Mm. Great. Well, time's absolutely flown by. We are afraid we're not going to have any time for Q&A, but um, I found that really, really interesting, really enjoyable. Um, thanks so much. Uh, you three for joining. I hope everyone here has enjoyed it as well. I guess just very finally, um, do, do, do you three want to maybe give a quick shout out on how they can learn more about the companies and maybe follow yourselves? It's hard. Do you want to start? Yeah. Um, again, f- follow the company, uh, duda.co and on social media and uh, myself, I'm uh, pretty active uh, on LinkedIn and a little bit on Twitter uh, hashtag um, with uh, at Itai Sedan. Brilliant. Thank you. Sean? Hard to see behind the, uh, you can't get in the Facebook group unless you have a trial. So instead of making you sign up for a trial, just go to YouTube and site, search high level. You'll get a ton of not only the stuff on the software, but what's really cool is we interview a lot of agency leaders. And so you can get a lot of free stuff just from great experts in your, uh, in your industry. Nice. Thank you so much. And Brandon, finally yourself. Absolutely. For us, marketing360.com or marketing360 on just about every social platform. I also highly recommend go to YouTube. We've got uh, four, five, six, seven hundred different videos there, uh, all about training, education on for small business owners and for agencies on how they can grow and scale and manage their business. Uh, so we offer those resources for free for anybody who wants to uh, wants to learn a little bit more and maybe take themselves to the next level. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And thanks, everyone who's um, who's joined. Um, hopefully you got some value out of it. We'll be recording it 
firing out tomorrow, putting up on our YouTube as well over the next few days. So uh, keep an eye out for that. All right. Have a great day, everyone.